All right, so let's get this thing unboxed. I requested this from Robert over at Value Electronics. So if you guys are interested in picking this sound bar up, make sure you hit up Robert. He's always got some good deals over there. Just tell him that uh, you came from Spare Change. All right, so let's see what we get in here. Front and center is the sound bar. Kind of heavy. Underneath the sound bar, per usual, we get the subwoofer. And then we get another packet here with the surround speakers. Okay, with the surround speakers, we get two power cords, one for the left, one for the right. Let's take a quick look at these. All right, so this is the surround speaker. Up front, I believe there's a full, full range driver up front, and I believe there's another full range driver on the top for the Atmos speakers. So this is gonna be forward firing, and then the driver up top here will be upwards firing for your rear Atmos height effects. So we get two of these in the box. Moving on to the subwoofer. We have the subwoofer accessories box with the instruction manual. Power cord for the subwoofer. Power cord for the sound bar. Included HDMI cable. This does support EARC. These are probably the wall mount two of these if you want to mount these on your wall. Batteries for the remote control, and of course, the remote control. This is very plasticky feeling, Samsung. For 1600 bucks, I would expect a better quality remote. That feels extremely cheap. And then we have some rubber sticky pads for the sound bar, probably so it doesn't bounce up against your wall. Or this could be for the subwoofer. This looks like kind of your typical subwoofer sound bar. So we got the bottom of the sub. This has got some rubber feet here to prevent it from slipping. On the front, nice and clean. Little Samsung logo that protrudes a little bit. We got the driver on the side here. Nothing on the uh, left side. On the rear, it's ported. Power input, pairing button, and then USB input. Dimensions are 8.26 inches wide by 15.8 inches high by 15.8 inches deep, and it weighs 27.2 pounds. Besides the power cord, this does pair with the soundbar wirelessly. The same for the surround speakers. All right, so what do we got here? This is the Q950A. This is the rear. Nothing back here, nice and clean. On the bottom, we've got the optical input two HDMI ins, one HDMI EARC output, USB for service, little network button, subwoofer pairing button, and then on the very far end is the power input. Let's just flip this around. On the top center, looks like there's a little LED display. Volume up, volume down. Looks like possibly a mute button or a cancel button then probably a selection button or menu button. It does support Dolby Atmos DTSX. It's an 11.1.4 channel Atmos DTSX soundbar and also supports Q Symphony, which means if your television set from either 2020 or 2021, it's gotta be a Samsung TV. That TV will pair with the soundbar and use the television's internal speakers to sync with the soundbar to give you an enhanced sound stage. So up front, there are three drivers up front for left, center, and right. There is the, of course, the up-firing speakers on the top here behind the mesh grill. And on the sides are side-firing drivers. So these are for your side surrounds. And that's it. This guy's gonna get placed over here underneath the television set on this little stand. I'm not gonna put it on top of the amplifiers, but it's gonna go here underneath the TV. It's not a Samsung TV, it's a Sony television set. And then I'm gonna place the surround channels behind the couch, the sides of the couch. But that's it, that's what we got. Let's get this thing installed and we'll come back, give you some thoughts and impressions. 
To get this set up, I'm going to go from my TV's HDMI ARC into the ARC input on the soundbar. Of course, you'll have to plug it in. After plugging the surround speakers in, I'm going to place them on stands behind the couch. Each speaker is labeled left and right, so keep that in mind. There's also no wires from the surround speakers to the bar, so it's wireless in that respect. I'm going to plug the subwoofer in, and I'm going to place it up front. Once you power on the bar, the surrounds and the subwoofer will go from a flashing blue light to a solid blue. That means that everything is connected. Now let's take a quick look at some of the settings. The display is located at the top of the bar, so you will have to get up to see what you're doing. Pressing the sound mode button will bring up a few different options. Standard means two channel plays as two channel, five channels, five channels, seven channel as seven channel, etc. So it'll play back in its native format. Tap it again, you have the surround option, and one more time, you have the game mode option. This will take everything and upconvert it up to 11.1.4. And lastly, you have the adaptive surround or adaptive sound option. This will analyze whatever you're watching and choose the appropriate sound format for you. Tapping on the settings button, you have the auto EQ, either on or off. AVA, which will automatically adjust the dialogue for you. So it'll raise it and lower it depending on what you're watching. You've got treble control at either plus six or negative six. Bass control, same thing, plus six, negative six. Sync, your center channel level, same thing, plus six or negative six. Side level, wide speaker level, front top level, rear level, rear top level, rear side level, and virtual on and off. First demo is the helicopter from the Dolby Atmos demo disc. With this demo, I did hear pretty clearly that the helicopter sound moved in a full 360 degrees around my living room. I never got the sensation it flew above me from behind, but it did sound like it was floating above my TV when the sound moved to the front. The next one we're going to listen to is the Dolby Atmos Leaf demo. This one was more convincing. Right from the start, you'll hear an insect or something buzzing from the top left over to the top right. It's not as distinct as having actual speakers above your head, but the illusion was good enough. When the leaf falls, it moves around front, then circles to the back, then it floats above your head from the top right all the way down to the lower left channel. And this was pretty believable too. The next one is the DTS-X channel callouts. Right front, center. Left side surround, right side surround, left rear, right rear, left front height, right front height, left rear height, right rear height. With this particular demo, I did hear each lower channel very clearly. The side channels were more of a wider front left and right rather than sounding like it was coming directly from the sides. The top front channel callouts more or less seemed to appear somewhere between the ceiling and the soundbar, so the sound was elevated but not exactly enough to fool me to where I thought it was coming from the ceiling. The top rear channel callouts just seemed like the left and right rear speakers were more spacious rather than coming from above my head. Keep in mind that the placement and the type of room that you have will impact the sound greatly, so the things that I heard or didn't hear might sound totally different in yours. 
One more thing that we've got to check out is the automatic room EQ. This takes about two minutes and should give you smoother bass response. I gotta say, I didn't notice a huge change. It's slightly less boomy on the bottom end, but nothing that was a real game changer. Again, depending on your room, you might hear a bigger difference. At the time of this video, the Q950A is 1799, but it's likely going to be on sale. Of all the immersive soundbars I've ever heard, this is right there near the top. The high channel effects was kind of hit and miss for me depending on what I was watching. Something sounded really good, and something sounded like everything was coming from the lower level. But when it's good, it's pretty impressive. I'm not going to say this will replace having individual speakers placed throughout your room, but for what it is, I think it'll get you a good approximation of what the Atmos or DTSX mix on your movies should sound like. The speakers all had good detail, which made it easy to pinpoint where specific sound effects were coming from, and I thought the subwoofer, either with or without the EQ, wasn't as boomy as previous versions. For an 8-inch sub, it was enough to give my living room a good rumble, and I found it blended nicely with the soundbar. There are some other features you might find useful like AirPlay and Bluetooth support, and Amazon Alexa is built in too. I should also mention, I didn't have any surround channel or subwoofer disconnect problems like I had on the previous model, so I'm guessing maybe they improved on that. If you guys have had that issue, then leave a comment down below and let us know. One glaring issue is the placement of the display. If you want to make any changes, you're going to have to get up to look at it, unless of course you placed it on your floor. It's also really small, so you're going to have to wait for the text to finish scrolling if you want to read it. With that being said, I think the Q950A is a solid soundbar that can throw out some convincing high channel immersiveness. It doesn't take up too much space, and it's a breeze to set up. Now if you do want to pick up this soundbar, then visit valueelectronics.com for the best price. Just be sure to mention the channel. So what are your thoughts on the Samsung Q950A? Is it Samsung's best, or have you heard a better sounding soundbar? Leave a comment down below and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next video.